Let's see how we can procedurally apply materials in Solaris using the name attribute on a mesh. So I'll go ahead and drop down a geo container. Currently I am at the OBJ level. So usually what happens is you are going to bring in a geometry. And in this case, I'm going to use an FBX character import. Let's go ahead and bring in the file. And the file that I'm using, I'll go ahead and in the source, we have this Spartan model. So let's also do a bone deform from here because we have some uh, animation and in this case I'm gonna go ahead and just press S and grab this ground plane and just delete so we only have our character mesh and from here we will do a null and let's rename this to out character so this model that I'm using is by McCarty 3d and it's available for free on sketchfab I will go ahead and provide you with this link if you want to download this model yourself and use it so all credits go to McCarty 3d Thank you very much for providing this awesome model. Let's go back in Houdini. And if uh, before we jump into Solaris, let's take a look at the attributes that came with this mesh. So in the geometry spreadsheet, if I go to the primitive level over here, we have quite a few attributes here. And if you are not sure which of these uh, you have to use, you can actually check first in your textures folder. So these are the textures that uh, came with this model and we can see the naming convention that is used here. So if we go by the channels of the material, so if you look at the base color metallic normal, we can check the string or syntax that's in front of the channel indication. So in this case, uh, we can see that we have Spartan chest mat and over here we have Spartan arms mat. So all we have to do is look through these attributes here and see which of these fit our naming convention. And in this case, it's going to be the FBX material name. So we can use this attribute to create a name attribute. So all I'm gonna do, we can see currently that our name is not using the same naming convention. So this means that when we go to Solaris, let's go to the scene view. If I jump, uh, let's grab our out character and control C, I will hold down N and jump into the lobs context. So in uh, the stage view over here, and let's just do a SOP import and paste our SOP path to our character. If I, let's also switch the view here to Solaris. If we look at our structure over here in the scene graph, we can see that in the SOP import, let's also rename this to care like this. And if we do a drop down, we can see we have armor, armor, LP, helmet, poly service. So it's currently, let's jump back to the object level. It's currently using the name that we have over here. And we want this name to be our FBX material name. So all I'm going to do here is drop down an attribute wrangle. And for this, let's say, let's run this over primitives. And we will say that S at name equals to s at fbx underscore material name. So now our name will be the same as our fbx material name. And if we go in the lobs context, we have all, all of our different texture sets split per individual mesh. So using this method of assigning materials will require this setup where we end up with the character split per individual texture set. So it's very important that the names we end up with over here correspond with the names that are used in the texture files. And this will make a bit more sense in a second. Let's first create just a one of these materials and assign it. So from here, we can do a material library. Let's jump inside and we will drop down a Karma material builder. And let's recreate this Spartan's arm mat, so our first material. Now it's very important that our materials have the same name as our meshes over here. So I will rename this to Spartan Arms Mat, like so. And this is case sensitive, so make sure that you spell it exactly how it's spelled over here. And let's dive inside. Let's get rid of the material properties and we don't have displacement in this case. And also we don't need the inputs. Let's start with uh, an MTLX image and let's go ahead and just create the material. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the textures and let's drop our, let's start with a Spartan 
Weapons Arms Met AO. And this should be a float signature. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. Let's bring in the base color. The signature should be a color. Let's plug this in our base color. And let's go ahead and multiply this by our AO, like so. I'll go ahead and let's copy, let's make one more copy and let's bring the next material, which is going to be our metallic. This one should be also a float and let's plug this in our metalness input. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. Let's bring in our normal and the signature here should be vector tree. Let's plug this through a normal map node and let's plug this in our geometry and in the normal slot. And finally, I believe we still need the roughness. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the metallic texture. Let's drag this over here and let's bring in our roughness. And this, sh uh, this one should also be a float signature and let's plug this in our specular roughness. Okay, so this is the base of our material and let's go up and one more time let's auto fill the material and instead of assigning it to the geometry here let's assign it using an attribute wrangle so i will drop down an attribute wrangle node and let's start by assigning it to our spartans arm mat geo so i'm gonna drag the path in our primitives over here and we can see in our materials tab we have our spartans arm mat and now to assign a material through vex we can use the function usd underscore add relationship target and now we have to give this some arguments inside uh, parentheses so first we will need the stage handle which in this case is going to be the first input so we can reference this with the with zero so we'll type here zero then we need to specify the primitive path on which we are operating on. So we have this specified over here in our primitives paths. And in order to reference this path, we can use the syntax s at prim path. Then we'll do comma. And again, this expression here simply grabs this path that we set. And uh, then we have to specify the name of the relationship that we want to assign and in this case it's going to be a bind relationship for the material so in between quotes we will do material colon binding and after this we'll add another comma and finally we have to specify the material which we want to assign and here i will just go ahead and grab from our scene graph i will just click and drag this over after our materials binding expression and just place this over here and this is a string so we need to place this between quotes as well so let's place this in the quotes and let's do a semicolon at the end and hit enter and now we can see in our viewport let's go ahead and get rid of the outline for the geometry we can see that we assign this to our arms and if i press shift r we can see our material showing and we can see that our material over here has the same name as our object that we are iterating on. So instead of just setting our material path directly ourselves manually, let's go ahead and see if we can make this procedurally to take in the name of our primitive. So what we can do in order to grab this name here, we can do, let's type enter and before this, we will place this name in a string variable. So we will do string name equals to, and to get the name, we can use USD name. And in between parentheses, let's give this the stage handle zero. And again, we will just simply reference our currently primitive path that we are iterating on. So S at prim path. So all this line will do is uh, it's going to grab this name here, Spartan arms mat, which is this mesh over here. And now in order to turn this into the material path that we need, we just have to add our slash materials slash string that we have over here. So what we can do is let's create another string variable and let's name this string mats. And we will say this equals to, and in between quotes, I will do slash materials slash and end quote, and we will simply do a plus our name variable. So now this this uh, maths string will simply will simply be this path slash materials slash, and then it's going to follow up with Spartan arms mat. So if I replace this entire string here that we set ourselves, if we replace this with our string variable maths, we can see that we have the same result. 
So now what we can do is simply operate over all of these meshes at the same time. So we can specify for our primitives here inside our care hierarchy. Let's do instead of setting the mesh name directly here, we will do a star symbol and this will grab all of our meshes. So it's going to grab the Spartan arms mat and it's going to assign a material called Spartan's arm mat. And then for chest, it's going to grab the material Spartan chest mat and so forth. And now all we have to do really is simply create all of the other materials as well. And we don't have to do this uh, manually. We can make things a little bit more procedural. So if I go inside the material tab, let's step inside our network and I will drop down a null over here and let's add a simple string channel to this null and let's grab a string let's place this in our root and we'll just name this texture set like so and also give this the same label I'll hit accept and we can grab the same name that we are using here in our material so if I go inside in order to grab the name of the container that we are inside we can use the expression and in between single quotes I will type op name and in between parentheses I will do double quotes and dot dot and then I will uh, and then I will end the expression with another single quote like so and if I middle mouse click we can see that this grabs the name of the parent container and I will press ctrl e and this is the expression like so. And now I can reference this name in our paths over here for all of our image nodes. So I will right click, copy parameter and go to all of our image nodes. Let's go to the end here and I will grab this Spartan arms mat and instead I will just do a paste relative references to our texture set name and now we should have the same name that we had earlier. So we can do the same thing for all of these other materials as well. Let's go ahead, grab all of this, paste relative references, and I'll do the same for all the other nodes as well. So now we have all of our paths updated and the reason that I'm using a null instead of just setting the expression op name inside our file name directly over here. So over here where we are references, let's maybe press control E. Over here where we are referencing our texture set channel that we created over here, we could directly just use the op name expression here, but I'll show you why it's better to use a separate channel for doing this. But anyway, uh, let's double check and see that our textures all work. So now if I go up, I can simply duplicate this by holding down Alt and we can simply start to populate all of the materials that we need. So I'm just looking in our character hierarchy over here and the next one will be chest mat. Let's duplicate this and the next one will be ear mat and I'll do the same for the rest of these materials. All right, so here we have it. And now if I go up, all we have to do is autofill materials. So they appear in our graph and if I go to the attribute wrangle, everything should be updating now. So if I press shift R, let's go ahead and maybe we need to restart our render. And here we have it. We almost have all of the textures working. Let's also append a Karma Physical Sky here, set exposure to a value of three, maybe change around the light angle to something like this. And for the most part, we can see that this works. And the reason the ear pieces and the shoulder pads aren't working, if we check out our texture sets in the folder, we can see that uh, we have for our shoulders, at least we have, let's uh, look at our Spartan shoulder mats. So this will be our shoulder geometry over here. But the name of this texture set is actually this uh, ODST shoulder mat. So we don't have the same name for the textures that we are using for our mesh. And this is why if we go in the material library, let's go to our Spartan's shoulder mat. Now the name that we give this material has to be the same name that we are using for our mesh. But if we go inside over here in our image folders, we are referencing the name of the material container. So over here in our file name, if we look, we can see that this says at the end here, Spartan shoulders mat. And this is why in these cases where our texture set doesn't match the name we have in our mesh, we have this null over here and we can directly give this the name that we want. So I will just go ahead over here and I will select this uh, ODST shoulder mat 
name and I will control C and I will paste this over here and use this instead of the OP name expression. So now if I press Shift R, we can see we have the shoulder piece. And uh, we can do the same for our ear material as well. So we can go in the Spartan ear mat. And uh, if we look in our texture set, we can see that this one says Spartan ear and this one says Spartan ears. So it has an extra S at the end here for the ear. And uh, all we have to do is just grab this and we will just paste this in our texture set. And now we should have updated and we have all of our materials working. So there we have it. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, we can just go ahead and save this expression out. So if I press Ctrl E, uh, let me just zoom in on this expression as well. So this is the full uh, code and uh, we can go ahead and we can just save this out, for example. So if I wanted to, I can do a uh, legacy preset here, save preset. We can give this a preset name. Maybe we can do auto materials and hit enter, save preset. And now if I get rid of this entire expression, I can go to the cogwheel here. We can go to the legacy presets and select the auto materials that we just created and it will add this entire code. So I hope this video was helpful. You can go ahead and download this project file if you follow the link in the description. And if you wanna learn Houdini, you can check out my in-depth courses on Voxite.com. This was it for this tutorial and hopefully we'll see each other again in a new tutorial.